Hey everybody, I'm Brooke Dozier, the Minister of Music here at Cedar Grove Church. I want to welcome you to our church where we love God, love people, and serve the world. I know that we desire to be with each other today, but remember that you are the church. So wherever you are, in your house, um, in your kitchen, in your living room, wherever you are, where two or more are gathered, God is there. And even if it's just you, God resides in your heart. So welcome to Cedar Grove Church. We hope that you enjoy the word and we hope that you enjoy our worship. And we hope that one day we will actually get to see you here at 528 East Main Street in Murfreesboro. God, now let's pray. Bow your heads with us wherever you are. Lord, thank you so much for the time that we've had together, God. I pray that you inhabit our praises, that you'd inhabit our worship, that you'd inhabit our homes, and that most of all, you'd inhabit our hearts, Father. God, I pray that we would not only be hearers of the word, but that we would also be doers, God, so that we would be change agents for this world, God. I pray if there's somebody that does not know you, that they would be inspired to say, what must I do to be saved? Even even at home, God. And so we just thank you for this time that we've had. We thank you for the time that we're going to have. Keep us safe, God. Keep us healthy during this time. And Lord, we just pray that we would continue to have your joy, most of all. In the precious name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Romans 12 and 1 says to present yourself a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Amen. 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 That is our act of worship. And we come into this place, God, only to worship you, God. We present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you, God. God, here is our worship.
workplaces and our families, God. Thank you. We offer ourselves as living sacrifices yes. Yes, Jesus. Thank you. to worship you, God. Help us to reflect yes. your glory everywhere we go. Yes. In our hearts, in our homes, yes. in our jobs, yes. in our recreation yes. places. Yes. Yes. Fill us, God. Praise the Lord, saints. It is giving time. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 and 7 says, For this I say, he would sow it sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he would sow it bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposed in his heart. So let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Amen. Amen. It is given time that we invite you, we implore you to give on today. For God love us a cheerful giver. Here at the Cedar Grove Church, uh, we have multiple methods of giving. Since we are not in the house of God, we can still give from where we are. And you can give today through our church center app or by mail. And also, you can text to give in this season. Amen. Church Center app by mail or our text to give. We encourage you today to give. Amen. Whatever the Lord has purposed in your heart to give is acceptable in the sight of God. We thank you in advance for your gifts in Jesus' name. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Once again, we come and we welcome you into our cycle sanctuary here at the Cedar Grove Church. We're grateful to God for his goodness, his grace, and his mercy. We're grateful to God for his provision, for his protection, for all the things that he continues to do in the life of the believer. We're thankful for you that have chosen to set aside time to come and to share and be a part of what the Lord is doing on this day. I believe that you're not here by accident. I truly believe from the bottom of my heart that you're here by divine providence. The Spirit of the Lord has called you here today because he has something significant that he wants to say and to share to you. And my challenge to you, to each and every one of you, wherever you are, wherever you're hearing this message, is to open up your heart, open up your mind, and, and have a receiving anointing today. Get ready to have an encounter with Christ. I believe today by the power of the Holy Spirit that you won't be the same. I believe that he's going to move mountains. I believe he's going to lift burdens. I believe he's going to heal bodies. I believe he's going to speak peace to your storm. I believe that today. I just believe that he's able to do that. And speaking of all of that, I, I'm grateful to God today. Grateful to God for our praise team that continues to usher us into his presence Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. Thank God for Minister David Reed and all of those that work behind the scenes to, to help us bring the gospel in in this format. I thank God for all of you that have served and sung your time, your talent, and your treasure. Some whose names are never mentioned, but you give it unto God. And I just believe that as you do it in private, God, the God I serve, he'll reward you openly. So we're grateful to God. We come with an attitude of gratitude. Thank you. And I want to say thank you too to all of those that took time to fast and pray uh, with the Cedar Grove Church during our period of consecration a period of seeking the face of the Savior. God has spoken. God has ministered. He's continued to do just what he said he would do. And because of that, I have an attitude of gratitude today. I thank God for what he's doing. I thank God for each and every one of you. And I thank God for this opportunity to share his word with you on this day. There is a word from heaven that I would love to share with you on this Sunday. I want to call your attention to the gospel according to St. Matthew. The Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 17, going from verse 14 through verse number 21. The Gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning at verse number 14 and going down through verse number 21. And I'm sharing from the New King James translation today, Matthew 17, 14 through 21. And when you have it, please shout amen. Amen, amen. Here begins the reading of God's word. And when they had come to the multitude, a man came at him kneeling down and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is an epileptic and suffers severely 
For he often, somebody shout often, often falls into the fire and often into the water. So I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. Then Jesus asked him and said, Oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Jesus said, Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of him. And the child was cured from that very hour. Hallelujah. Then the disciples came to Jesus, Jesus privately and said, Why could we not cast it out? So Jesus said to him, Because of your unbelief. For assuredly I say to you, if you have the faith, yeah, as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. And nothing, somebody shout nothing, yeah. Nothing will be impossible for you. However, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. Amen. I'm going to pray, but the Lord now want to minister from the subject of that 21st verse where it says, however, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. I just want to minister from the subject of fasting and prayer. Amen. Fasting and prayer. Let us pray. Precious Lord, we praise you. Lord God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for another chance to come, oh God, to surrender our gifts, our time, our talent, and our treasure unto thee. Lord, I thank you so much for preparation, Lord God. I thank you for training. I thank you for everything that has gone forth up until this moment to properly prepare to present your word, oh God, to rightly divide the word of truth. Now, Lord, uh, serve as the final editor of this message. Take out what needs to be taken out. Put in what needs to be put in. Minister, move, heal, encourage, lift, and deliver as only you can. I'm going to say thank you now. Your credit is good enough with me to thank you in advance. Thank you for what you get ready to do. Have your way in this place and in this message. It's in the marvelous, mighty, and matchless name of Jesus we ask it all. Somebody loves and shout amen, amen, amen. I want to talk about fasting and praying. Uh, some of you understand that fasting is designed of, is defined as laying aside food mm, for a period of time when the believer is seeking to know God in a deeper experience. Let me say that again. Uh, fasting is defined as laying aside food for a period of time when the believer is seeking to know God in a deeper and more personal experience. And we understand that uh, we can fast from food. That's the uh, spiritual definition. But we can also sacrifice other things that are distracting, that are detouring us, that are delaying us or uh, creating difficulty for us to experience the move of God, the presence of God. Amen. And, and Jesus talks about fasting. The Bible talks about fasting in, in several instances as we walk through the text today. It talks about, uh, Jesus talked about it in, in Matthew chapter 6, verse number 17. He talked about the importance of private fasting. He said, when you fast and when you pray, go into your closet, yes, Lord, and, and fast in secret, yes, Lord, and, and wash your face, yes, Lord, so that nobody else knows that you're fasting, yes. Uh, I believe that privately seeking his presence uh, puts you in a position where you can publicly witness his power. Let me say that again. I believe that privately seeking his presence puts you in a position where you can publicly witness his power. Yes, Lord. Does anybody know that power? Private consecration comes before public celebration. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, Jesus talks about the importance of fasting, and he talks about it in doing it in private. Amen. And the Bible goes on to describe three different forms of fasting. Yes, three different forms of fasting. Number one, total absence of food. Uh, number two, uh, an absolute fast. Hallelujah. Uh, and then number three, a partial fast. As we know, it's the Daniel fast. Let me walk through it. Amen. Uh, total absence. We see that. That's total abstinence. We see that in Luke chapter 4, verse number 2, when Jesus ate, somebody say ate, he ate nothing. Yes, Lord, he was in his time when he was getting ready to be uh, presented for his public ministry. He fasted for 40 days and for 40 nights. And Jesus himself, he ate 
nothing, amen, that's total abstinence of food. Uh, an absolute fast is what we see in Acts chapter 9, verse number 9, where the apostle Paul, when, when God was directing him and redirecting his steps uh, and redis uh, redefining and clarifying the purpose that God had for Paul's life, when he was changing his name from Saul to Paul, uh, we see what we have, an absolute fast. And that's where he fasted and he did not eat nor drink anything for three days. In other words, he abstained from both food and water. Yes, Lord, that's an absolute fast where he didn't uh, 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 seek anything uh, in the natural because God was redirecting his steps and, and doing something in the spiritual realm. Yes, hallelujah, uh, a total fast and then an absolute fast. And then we have what we know as the Daniel fast or a partial fast. Uh, we see that in Daniel chapter 10, verse number 3, where it emphasizes a restricted diet rather than complete abstinence, where you're not eating certain things, uh, 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 a Daniel or a partial fast. That's a, the other type of fast or other form of fast that we often see in Scripture. And many of us have gone through times of, of fasting, yes, Lord, uh, because even in Daniel's day, there were many benefits. It had physical benefits. Uh, his skin looked clear. His, his thoughts were clear, yes, Lord. But not only does it have spirit, physical benefits, it has spiritual benefits. Benefits, yes, Lord. Uh, uh, because something about fasting, uh, uh, when you crucify flesh, uh, it, it quickens your spirit, yes, Lord. Uh, when you fast, it, it gives you an understanding of number one, the preferred will of God. Let me say that fasting helps us understand number one, the preferred will of God, uh, the preferred will of God, yes, Lord, to, to understand, Lord, who are you and what will you have us to do? Uh, the preferred will of God. I used to think of fasting of, of kind of a spiritual quid pro quo. <laughs> when I used to go to the Lord and say, Lord, you know how good I've been. Uh, since I've given you a little bit, you ought to give me a little bit. I, I used to uh, fast to ask God to do my will. But does anybody know that you fast not for God to do your will, but for you to understand his preferred will? Amen. But not only the preferred will of God, number two, when you fast, it helps you understand the power of God. Yeah, it's a, a power of God. It's God. It's when God puts his super on your natural. Yes, Lord. The things that you've been struggling with, the things that has been heavy on your mind, the things that's been preventing you from maximizing your potential, the things that's been holding you back, the things that's, uh, uh, that you can't seem to break through. Uh, when, you, when you fast, yes, Lord, uh, he puts his super on your natural. You get to experience a supernatural breakthrough of God. Does anybody know that God can do it? Yes, he has the power and if, when you fast and pray, you get to experience not only his preferred will, but you also understand the power of God. And then number three, you get to experience the uh, personal experience with God. Yes, uh, uh, fasting benefits. You understand the person, you get a personal experience with God. Uh, it, it's one thing to understand what God has done for David. It's one thing to understand what God has done for Daniel. It's another thing to understand what he's done for Paul and other people in the past. But does anybody know that you can have a personal experience with God? Uh, that God can do it for you. Yes, Lord. And I've come to the point that, you know what? Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, please don't do it. Mm. Don't do it without me. Yes, Lord. Uh, uh, Lord, while you're blessing, while you're in the blessing business, please don't pass me by. Has anybody come to that point yet? Yeah, I don't want to just hear about what he did for mom. I don't want to just hear about what he did for my dad, my grandfather. I don't want to have a personal mm, experience with God. And I thank God. I thank God for this uh, not-so-secret weapon of fasting and praying. Uh, uh, we're aware of the benefits and, and the blessings of prayer. Uh, the Bible talks about it frequently, how Jesus, even he had his own prayer life, one of the reasons why he was never rushed, one of the reasons why he was never discouraged, never, one of the reasons why you never see him tired from all of the ministry and the work that he was doing, because he often rose early and went into a solitary place. And there, he prayed, but it also talks about the importance of fasting. Again, when he was getting ready to go into his public ministry in Luke chapter 4, yes, Lord, uh, uh, and even in Matthew, yes, he spent 40 days of fasting and prayer. And what I thank God for, because I thank God for the Cedar Grove Church, and I thank God for each and every one of you that has joined us in this season where we have taken some time to fast, where we've taken some time to pray, where we've taken some time to uh, uh, to get into the presence of God, uh, uh, where we're seeking and surrendering to the plan and purpose and the process 
of God. Fasting is important, yes. Uh, I thank God for the opportunity to seek his face mm, and not just seek his hand. Uh, uh, to ensure that we're doing what he's blessing and not just ask him to bless whatever we're doing. Yes, that's what fasting does for us. Yes, Lord. Fasting, uh, it, 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 it speaks to your head, your heart, and your hands. Yes, it gives you revelation. It gives you direction. It gives you a better understanding. Yes, it even gives you the peace that surpasses all understanding while you're in the midst of all the problems that you may face. And when I look around and I see what we're facing in our communities, uh, what I see when I see what we're facing in our country, uh, when I see even what we're facing in our church environment, uh, I believe that this is a time where we need to understand the importance of fasting and praying. Uh, the understanding, the importance of tapping into the spirit realm, to, to have an understanding, to get questions, to get answers to these places where we have questions. Yeah, let me say that again, to get questions in these areas where we have uh, uh, so we well, get answers where we have questions. Yes, Lord. Uh, uh, so God can order our steps so that we can have an action plan to be part of the solution. Amen. And not just complaining about the problems. Because somebody knows that we got some problems going on in the country. <laughs> Don't make me go down the list today. Yeah. Uh, somebody knows that we got some problems going on in the country today. Yes, when we see stocks rattling on Wall Street. Yes, when we have stom stomachs growling on your street. Yes, we have some problems in the country today. Yes, Lord. Uh, uh, when we see stocks rattling on Wall Street, but we see sickness and suffering on our street, we understand that we have problems today. But, but I just believe today that as we continue to seek his face, and, and not just his hand, yes, Lord, that we will experience the presence the power and a personal experience from our God. And I just believe somebody wants to experience God today. Amen. But uh, we don't want to just hear about what he's able to do. We want to experience it ourselves. David said it this way. I would have fainted had I not believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Is that your testimony today? If you just, you just go on and shout amen. I want to see the goodness, yeah, of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. Well, that brings me to my text today. I know I had a long runway, but I'm getting ready to take off now. In this 17th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, amen, it, it talks about such a situation. It talks about such a situation where we are having here uh, uh, the importance, Jesus is emphasizing the importance of fasting and praying. Amen. At this point in the 17th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, Christ is on his way to Calvary. Uh, he has become popular now. He has done many a miracle. He has equipped his disciples to carry on the work uh, that he has started in the earth. Yes, Lord. And in this 17th chapter, it's a phenomenal, fantastic chapter because it begins with a mountain high experience. Uh, at the beginning of this 17th chapter, he takes three disciples, Peter, James, and John, and they go up to the Mount of Transfiguration, where they experience a, a transfiguration of the presence of Christ, and where they are also experienced a visit from Elijah and Moses, a, a mountain-high experience. Uh, uh, the experience was so wonderful, it was so beautiful, that Peter just said, Lord, it's just good for us to be here. Yes, uh, 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 he had a wonderful encounter and God gave him sacred secrets. He gave him a sneak previews. He, he, he let him know some things that were getting ready to come and he had a mountain high experience. Yes, but, but after they had finished that experience, um, after they had been mountain high, when they came down from the mountaintop, they came down to Valley Low. Mm, and somebody can relate to that. Uh, being mountain high in one moment and then going bad and low the very next moment. Because as soon as they get through with the, the mountain of transfiguration and the presence of God, they come down to the bottom of the mountain where they experience the presence of a demon uh, that has possessed the son. And now this father, yes, Lord, this father is bringing his son, and he brought him to his disciples, uh, disciples of Jesus, uh, uh, not Peter, James, and John, but the other, the other nine that were down at the bottom of the mountain, and they were flunking at a miracle. In other words, they were messing up a miracle because the man brought his son who had some situations, uh, had a situation going on. He was possessed by a demon, and he brought him to the disciples. And the man said that he could not cure him. 
the disciples could not cure him. And, and the reason why they were powerless, the reason why they were uh, uh, ineffective, as they later explained after, after they questioned Christ about this situation, is because Jesus told them in verse number 21, this coming by, fasting and praying. Amen. Amen. And that's what we want to talk about today. We want to dig deeper about the importance of fasting and praying as we walk through the text. Can I walk through the text today? Uh, yes, Lord. Uh, as we go through the text, the first thing I want to point out is a discouraged dad. Amen. A discouraged dad. Amen. As we go deeper, yes, Lord. Again, we have a father with a troubled child. Uh, uh, when they came down to the bottom of the hill, the Bible said that uh, when they had come, uh, they came a man, verse 14, and he came kneeling. Uh, he came saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, uh, for he is an epileptic and suffers severely and often falls into the fire and often into the water. Yes, Lord. Uh, this man had a troubled child. Uh, the New King James Version calls it uh, an epileptic situation. Uh, uh, but Mark 19, Mark chapter 9, verse number 17 says that it was actually a spiritual situation. Because what was uh, 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 this child was troubled with? What this child was suffering from, as according to Mark 9 and 17, was a dumb spirit. Somebody shout, a dumb spirit. Amen, amen. Let me make that plain. Hallelujah. Some of y'all you thinking that's your ex. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. A dumb spirit. Yes, Lord. Um, uh, a dumb spirit. Uh, in other words, this boy was attacked by a demon uh, that prevented him from talking. Uh, it was also a deaf spirit uh, that prevented him from hearing. And this spirit would often throw this boy in the fire and the flood. It, it was causing him to have seizures uh, and, and to convulse violently. Uh, this spirit had overtaken this boy. And let me just throw something in. I, I try not to be too deep while you're sitting on your couch on, on Sunday morning, hallelujah. But, but do you understand that the things that we're dealing with today, hallelujah, it always begins in the spirit realm and then it manifests in the natural realm. Can I go deeper today? Yes. Uh, it always uh, uh, starts out in the spiritual realm and then it manifests in the natural realm. Jesus said in John chapter 4 when he met the woman of the well, Man, he said, we are a spirit, and those who worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. Uh, uh, what you see in the, in the natural has already taken place in the spirit, and that's why many of us don't get the breakthrough. Uh, that's why many of us don't get uh, uh, the, the answers that we're looking for is because we're fighting with the wrong weapons. We can't back uh, uh, natural battles, uh, 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 spiritual battles with natural weapons. Uh, we need to fight with spiritual weapons. Paul said it this way in Ephesians 6, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places. And that's why we need to put on the whole armor of God. I guess, Lord, the helmet of salvation, having your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Yes, Lord, the sword of the spirit. Yes, Lord. And being able to pray in the spirit. Uh, he talks about being able to fight with spiritual weapons. Yeah. So what we must do, yes, Lord, uh, uh, is to understand what's going on. This kid, this child, this man brought him, yes, Lord, this discouraged dad because he brought his son who was possessed with a dumb spirit. And he was discouraged. Not only was he discouraged, but he was desperate. Uh, he was despondent. Uh, uh, and he was even doubting because he, he said, you know what, uh, uh, this is not the first time that I've had this trouble with my son. The Bible says that uh, he, for he often falls into the fire. He often falls into the flood. Uh, some of you understand that some problems uh, are not just first time problems. Uh, uh, this is not the first time that you've experienced some of the things that you're dealing with. Have you ever had a problem that you can continue to deal with season after season after season? Uh, somebody shout often. <laughs> uh, uh, you had some problems before COVID-19. Uh, often. And, and sometimes uh, uh, this problem continues to come to your house. It's nothing discouraging like a problem that continues to come to your house. Uh, let me make it plain because some of y'all understand what it means to, to have a frequent problem, a, a situation that often 
comes to your house. Because some of you understand that you didn't uh, uh, that the first time you prayed uh, to quit smoking cigarettes, amen. Uh, you didn't quit, amen. Uh, 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 the first time you prayed to, uh, to have peace in your home, hallelujah, uh, it didn't happen the first time. Uh, 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 you have had situations that you had to deal with often. Hallelujah. Amen. And, uh, and, and, and what I like about this brother right here, this man right here, yes, Lord, he said, he, he often, uh, he, did, he said, and I brought him to your disciples. Mm. Uh, somebody knows that nothing gets your attention like when you are experiencing trouble with your child. Uh, nothing gets your experience, nothing gets your attention, let me say that. Uh, like when you are experiencing trouble with your child. Hallelujah. I used to listen to my mama, yes, Lord, and, and, and she's five foot four, yes, Lord, as sweet and kind as she can be. But if you want to see another side of her, <laughs> mess with her children. <laughs> Hallelujah. I think I got some help in the house, yes, Lord. I, I think my mama is not the only one, yes, Lord, yes. If you want to see another side of Mother Dolores, yes, Lord, mess with her children. And that's not just something that uh, she did when we were younger. Yes, Lord, she's 70 plus now. Yes, and, and even to this day, if you mess with one of her kids, yes, Lord, hallelujah, Mother Matthews is going to have to do, say something to you and repent later. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Nothing gets your attention uh, more than when something is happening to your child. And not only my mama, but any good parent, nothing gets your attention like when something is happening to your child. And what I like about this brother right here, he says that, you know what? Uh, he said, I brought him to your disciples. In other words, uh, uh, I, I didn't send him to his, uh, I didn't send him with his mama. I didn't send him by his grandmama. I brought him to your disciples. And nothing is worse than having a frequent reoccurring problem uh, uh, than going to the place of healing and experiencing more hurt. <laughs> because uh, not only did we have a disappointed father, uh, uh, not only did we have a discouraged father, but we saw also have the disappointing disciples. Amen. Not only did we have a discouraged dad, number one, but we had disappointing disciples because, again, the only thing worse than having a frequent recurring problem is going to a place of healing and experiencing more hurting. Verse 16 says, and I brought him to your disciples and they could not cure him. Uh, I brought him to your disciples uh, and they could not cure him. I, I played by all the rules. I did what I was supposed to do and, and I brought him to the house of healing. I brought him to your disciples to the ones that you had already equipped and uh, empowered to, to walk on serpents. Uh, the ones that you had said that they should even do greater works. Uh, but when I brought him to your disciples, hmm, they could not cure him. Uh, they could not cure him. Amen. Uh, uh, and, and again, there's nothing like, nothing more discouraging than going when you're hurting and going to the place of healing and, and not getting the healing that you desire, but experiencing more hurt. Amen. Uh, let me ask you, have you ever been super hungry mm. and, and watched the commercial of your favorite restaurant? Uh, Lord, have mercy. I don't think I'm the only one <laughs> during this period of fasting and praying. Yes, Lord. Uh, uh, it seems like your favorite restaurant always puts on their, their best commercial. Lord have mercy, and, and some of you just like me, you couldn't wait for this fast to be over. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy, you already thought in your mind, you still had days of fasting and praying to go. You already knew what you were going to order. Knew your side items and all that other stuff. And, and you seen the commercial, and then it was mouth-watering, and you were so tempted, and you just couldn't wait to get there. But have you ever been somewhere, and, 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 and although that you were hungry, Lord have mercy, you, you saw the advertisement, and it didn't produce what was promised? Ooh, Lord. There's nothing uh, more discouraging. Hallelujah. But, and that's the same situation when you're hurting and you go to a place and don't get healed. Uh, uh, when you're hungry and you go to a place and you don't get filled. Hallelujah. And when you need help, guess what? And, and you don't receive what you are looking for. There's something that will make you discouraged. Yes, Lord. And you can be disappointed with the disciples. Yes, Lord. And that's what I see today. Hallelujah. Because as I look at our country, as I look at our community, 
hallelujah, as I look at our churches, I, I'm wondering today, is Christ disappointed with his disciples? Hmm. When you look at the things that are going on in our country, when you look at the things that are going on in our community, our churches, I'm wondering today, is Christ disappointed with his disciples? Some of you remember Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and how he spoke in the I Have a Dream speech in Washington, D.C. Uh, he said that I have a dream that one day that my four little children will be able to be judged not by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Hallelujah. He, he, he talks about, uh, the, uh, the, as he quoted the, uh, the Declaration of Independence, he said, we hold these truths to be held self-evident. That all men are created equal. And that everybody is, should be granted these inalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And he goes on to talk about the promissory note uh, that has been issued with that promise to the African American. American has been returned, Lord have mercy, uh, 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 marked insufficient funds. And even as I look at uh, the role of the church today, uh, when, when Christ looks at his disciples, when he, when he looks at the church in 2020, uh, uh, all these years later, I'm wondering today, is he disappointed in his disciples? Because hmm. really, uh, even in the midst of all of that, yes, Lord, hallelujah, uh, uh, I just believe today that as we fast and pray, yes, Lord, I believe that this, the, comp, the, the, the problem is complex. Somebody say it's complicated. Uh, it is complicated. Uh, we do need judicial reform. Yes, Lord, we do need educational reform. We do need economic reform. Yes, Lord, hallelujah, and so many other reforms, hallelujah. And I just believe that, yes, Lord, there is a place for laws, but there's also a place that we need to do that in the spirit realm, and we have to tap into, we have yeah, see the presence and the hand and power of God, hallelujah, to let the church do our part, yes, uh, as well as the country uh, doing their part. Uh, I brought it to your disciples, uh, and they could not hear him. Hallelujah. And some of you are understanding, hallelujah, this uh, discouraged dad and this dis disappointing disciples. Uh, some of you are wondering, why uh, Why is it that this man who did everything that he knew to do, he brought him to the house of healing. He brought him to the place where he was supposed to get help. Hallelujah. But in the midst of all of that, he still didn't get the help that he needed. And even later, Jesus explains it as he goes down through the text uh, when they asked him privately and said, Lord, why is it that we couldn't do it? Well, let me, let, let me explain this today because, first of all, it was three disciples again that were on the top of the Mount of Transfiguration with Jesus. But there were some other disciples. Yes, Judas, Downton Thomas, Matthew, uh, Bartholomew, uh, some other folks, hallelujah, that was trying to do the work of God without the presence of God. And whenever you're trying to do the work of God without the presence and the power of God, you're setting yourself up, yes, for a flunking, disappointing situation. Yes, Lord. And Jesus told him the reason why that you couldn't do it is because of your unbelief. Somebody shout unbelief. Do you understand that uh, the reason why the devil desires to disappoint you just like this dad, hallelujah, he always wants to attack three different areas. Yes, Lord. He wants to, first of all, attack uh, God's preference to, to see if it, uh, uh, what you're going through is in the will of God. Uh, then number two, he wants to talk about not only his presence, presence, but also God's power. Does anybody know God is able today? Amen. And then also he wants to attack your area of personal closeness. Yes, uh, I know he's uh, uh, he, maybe his preference. Hallelujah. I know he has the power, but, but can he do it for me? Hallelujah. Well, I want to let you know today that God wants to heal your house. Amen. Does anybody know that God still makes house call? Yes, Lord. I, I know you may be despondent. Yes, Lord. I, I know you've been disappointed, but I want to let you know today that God I serve, yes, he still makes house calls. Yes, Lord. He's still able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you can ask to think according to the power that working in you. Yes, Lord. And although this man may be discouraged, yes, Lord, although he may be despondent, uh, even though he was in a situation where he was even got Enough. Because in Mark's account, in Mark chapter 9, he says, you know what, Lord, I brought it to your disciples and they could not hear me. And, and you know what, I don't even know 
know about you. I, I'm looking at you crazy, amen. And I want to let you know today, hallelujah, that somebody, if you was just like this day, yeah, you've been discouraged. Yes, Lord. You've been disappointed by the disciples. But, but I want to let you know today that God is able. Yes, Lord. Uh, let's see if I know my God is able today. Hallelujah. Because even though you may have a situation where you're just disappointed, man, yes, Lord, or you've been dis disappointed by the disciples, hallelujah. I want to talk about divine deliverance, amen. Does anybody know that God is a deliverance today? Hallelujah. Because even after they've done all they can, uh, uh, God tells us all we have to do is stand. Uh, he told Moses, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Uh, does anybody know that God is able today? If you believe that shout, he's able. Hallelujah. My God is able, yes, Lord. Because even though the disciples couldn't heal them up, uh, Jesus said, pray to me. <laughs> In other words, you can pray it to me. Does anybody know that whatever your situation is, uh, you can cast all your cares on him? Uh, for he cares uh, for you. That's what Peter said. Yes, Lord. And I'm glad today that I have a God that, that hears my cry. Uh, and he says, you know what? It's because of your unbelief. And I know your devil has been attacking your belief, maybe He's been attacking to see if you are feeling today that he's able to do it. But I won't let you know that God is the same God yesterday. Today and forever, Lord. If he did back then, guess what? He'll do it again. Jesus told him, bring the boy to me. Uh, the Bible said that he cast out that demon, guess what? And immediately, somebody shot immediately. Yeah, the boy was cured from his situation. And I know you may have been in a situation that seems to keep coming to your house often. But does anybody know the God I serve? Uh, if you're praying to Jesus, yeah, that's all your cares on him. But he cares. For you. He said, if you have the faith and the grain of mustard seed, that you can speak to the mountain and say, Be thou removed unto the sea. Does anybody know that he's still a mountain mover? That he's still a bird bearer? That he's still a heaven load sharer? The God I serve, he's able. He's able. He's able. He's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask of him. So even in the midst of our situation where we have a discouraged dad, in this situation where we have disappointing disciples, I want to remind you today that we got a divine deliverer. And he's able today to give deliverance to not only this situation, but any situation that we face. So as I minister today, and as the choir continues, as the musicians pray softly today, I want to let you know today that Jesus wants us to understand that there is a spiritual solution to what we see happening in the natural. There is a spiritual solution to everything that we see happening in the natural. I say it in my sermon, but I believe it's worth repeating. Because believe it or not, everything that we see, everything that we see happens first in the spirit realm. And then it manifests in the natural realm. In order for us to get blessings and breakthrough, in order for us to see the hand of God move with power, and authority in our lives. That we can see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Hallelujah. There are certain things that in order to, to feel, to understand his perfect will. And to be able to experience his power. And to experience it personally for us. Hallelujah. This, as he said in verse 20, only comes by fasting and praying. Fasting and praying. The God I serve, he's still a mountain mover today. Does anybody believe that? He's still a mountain mover. And as we seek his face, as we turn down our prayer, as we crucify our flesh and press our way into his presence, God continues to move. He continues to minister. He continues to speak. He continues to heal. He continues to deliver. Does anybody know he's a deliverer today? He's a deliverer. And I don't care how dealt with this thing, but I don't care how often this come by the house. God is still able today. He's able. He's still the mountain moon. But I'm grateful to God today for this secret weapon that's available to the saints, but not so secret weapon that's available to the saints. This opportunity to seek his face. Yeah, seek his face. And, and not just his hand. To say, Lord, who are you? What will you have me to do? And whatever it is, yes, Lord, God, God gives us action plans. Yes, Lord, he'll, he'll order our steps. 
to tell us what we need to do because somebody knows that it always works in worship. Yes, Lord. He told Mary and Martha that, yes, Lord, Martha was working, but Mary was worshiping. And I just believe there's a combination of all of that that's necessary to see true change in the earth, to experience the goodness of the Lord, to experience his power and his presence, and to experience it personally. Personally. I don't know about you, but I would serve a God that I couldn't be. I would serve a God that has eyes and can't see me. I would serve a God that got hands and can't pick me up. I would serve a God that got ears and, and couldn't hear me when I call. I serve a God that's sitting up high and he looks down on me. And as we speak his face, not just his hand, as he sees his face, he continues to move, he continues to minister. And he'll speak to our hand, he'll, he'll govern our thoughts, he'll speak to our hearts, he'll give us the peace that surpasses all understanding. And he'll even guide our hands, just for our heart, our head, our head, our head, our heart, and our hands, so that we can do what God has called us to do. But this type of revelation, this type of guidance, this type of direction, it only comes in the presence of God when we're seeking His face, when we're turning from our wicked ways. We can hear from heaven. We can hear from heaven. He will forgive our sins and He will heal the land. And one thing I love about the Lord, Hallelujah! If you pray and you know how to call on Him just right, Hallelujah! Then He will even speak peace, even while you're going through your storm. He'll give you that peace that surpasses all understanding. That's the type of God I serve today. Hallelujah, but it starts. This only comes by fasting and prayer. And if you did it for this man, for this son, guess what? What about your house? What about your situation? He'll do it for you too. But the first thing that you must do is you must receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you're hearing this message today and you haven't said your ABCs, yes, except believe and confess, we want to give you this opportunity come and to seek his face and to, to know him in an intimate and personal way. Accept the fact that you're born or born or sinner. Accept. Guess what? That's your A. B. Believe that he is the son of God that died for your sins and make your confession with your mouth. Believe it or not, he'll come in. He'll minister to you. He'll lead you and guide you. Most importantly, he'll save your soul. That after this time of sickness, sadness, and sorrow, guess what? He'll take you over there where the wicked shall cease from trouble and the weary shall be at rest. If you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, we're offering Christ to you today. Yes, Lord. We want to let you know that he's able today. And you can just type up, uh, you can email us. Yes, Lord. Info at cedarroadchurch.org. Yes, Lord. And our team will reach out to you. We'll help you through this entire process because he's able today. He's able today. He's able. But you got to take the first step. Are you here to worship today? Do you mind about him now? This man was too proud to bear today. He surrendered all to God. And because of that, he was able to see the hand of God move mightily in his house. And because he did it for him, guess what? I just believe he'll do it for you today. Amen. The word of God for the people of God and the people of God did say, amen. May God bless you. May he forever keep you is our prayer. Hallelujah.